what, why did you start a tackle company? Because like most people say, the best way to make a small fortune in fishing is to start with a bigger fortune. So yeah, uh, what, what, what led you down the path of uh, custom crankbaits? So like, what, how did it happen? And then we'll get into like what the you know what they are and uh, what they do. That is all Sarah's fault right here. Is what it was. We was uh, fishing down on the Ohio River, and we pulled out a put out a, a brand new shallow running crankbait on her rod for her. She makes one cast with it. Hits a rock, breaks the bill off. Reels it in. It's like, oh, well, okay, well, put another one on. And three months later, I, I looked at her and I said, do you remember whenever you broke that one crankbait down on the Ohio River? She goes, no. I said, well, it kind of hasn't stopped running through my mind. I was like, I think we should start a crankbait business. Hmm. I was like, I think we can make something better, something different that other people don't have out there right now. I was like, I haven't stopped thinking about it since you broke it that day, three months ago. My fault. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good mistake or a good, uh, accident. So that got you thinking about crankbaits, but then why did that, like, how did that become the crankbaits that you, or what, what kind of more explain the process? Like, so that's sure you got a broken bill and a, I mean, we've all broke bills on crankbaits. So yeah. uh, let's take it a step farther. Like. I have made them before. My neighbor growing up as a kid, uh, back through my teenage years, uh, I would go bass fishing with my neighbor a lot. And he made some handmade wooden crankbaits. And so he kind of taught me some of the process and everything. So I kind of knew some of the, how things work and everything, you know, the tricks to kind of making them and stuff to look for. And so I wasn't really starting out from scratch. I've always made my own spinner baits, buzz baits, and a lot of my own jigs even. So I'm kind of used to the do it yourself thing. You know, I've used a lot of other handmade balsa baits in the past and kind of know what the, the good parts are of them, but also kind of what the downfalls are of them. I just figured, you know, if we're going to do this, I want to make something a little bit different than what's out there and try to make something better than what I think is out there right now. Kind of let us down the path and, a lot of uh, a lot of testing out of different materials because I didn't want to go the balsa route just because, you know, there's so many other people out there making them with balsa. I wanted to see if I could find something a little bit outside of the box. Because right, there's a lot of balsa crankbait, right? Like you got, you know, like Zoom WECs, you've got yeah. black labels. I mean, like custom balsa baits have been around for years all the way back to i mean basically the bagley's right that's kind of like probably the most popular ones that were kind of widely accepted and obviously some of their shortcomings is they're not super durable right inconsistencies right like that's kind of the, the beauty and the drawback of a balsa is that they don't all run the same which is good because when you get one that really catches fish really <laughs> catches fish. And some of them like uh like some of like i know the reaction innovations method crank i don't know if you ever uh, I've heard, yeah. I haven't ever used that one, but I know I saw you talking about that. Great crankbait, but they had issues where, like, you'd have to buy, you know, basically half the ones you buy, you could just throw in the trash. Like, they just yeah. wouldn't get out and wouldn't run and wouldn't track no matter how much you tuned them, right? So you went a different route. Why don't you kind of tell us, you know, what, what, how your baits are constructed or how you went down that path and why? I went down the path because I was looking again for something a little bit different than what was out there. I wanted to find something that was going to be stronger than balsa. That was kind of a big thing, but I wanted something that was still as lightweight because that's where you get that extra action and everything that, you know, balsa is known for. It's, it's great for that. And I kept playing around with different materials and different materials. And uh, I kind of had a couple other ideas. Like I wanted a weight transfer system inside of the bait. After I was finally happy with the material that we started using, and I started thinking about, you know, what was the key things I wanted in that bait now? Unlike a lot of the other balsa makers, they make them, you know, the full plug all at one time. We've actually got to make ours half at a time uh, because we do have that weight transfer system in there. And we also run a through wire construction that runs from the nose of the bait down to the belly hook and then out to the tail. So that's all one piece of wire that runs throughout the entire bait. Which is nice when you hook a big one, for sure. Like that's you hook a big one, you hang on to something on the bottom. I mean, you know, we fish the Ohio River and a couple other rivers. You never know what kind of stuff you're going to get hung on to. The other day, 
hung on to like a shirt, you know, and you can't knock that thing off of it. I, I took my big fiberglass pole and pried the thing up and got my bait out of it. But yeah, it's not going to pull out. You're not going to lose a hook hanger. I mean, at the very worst, if you ever do catastrophically break the bait in half, you're still bringing back whatever is on it. Sarah never hooked the bridge piling, but she's hit quite a what? few. Whenever we was doing all the durability testing, it was, uh, I saw her send one right into a bridge piling with a spinning rod. I was like, you know, probably could have slowed that down right before it hit it, but she reeled it in that looked great. I was like, hey, all right. <laughs> They're definitely durable. I've tested the rocks for just Yeah. I know you called so Sarah leads R&D, right? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. Yeah, when we was testing the durability stuff, that was uh, that was Sarah's lead on that one. It was funny. Um, actually, what came about the video we put up on our uh, Facebook and Instagram about hitting the bait with a softball bat. Right. That came about talking to Bill Lowen at one of the shows here this winter, and I was telling him, he goes, well, how did you figure out, you know, what material you're going to use and everything like that? I was like, honestly, I said, we was hitting some of the blocks of material with a bat to see if it would hold up or not. There was a lot of trial, you know, stuff, and, um, you know, he's he's very particular. Like he said, like, he's fished forever. He knows what he wants. We know what the best parts of certain lures are, and so that's what we were looking for, and that's, you know, we kind of took a bunch of the really awesome things about different baits and put them all in one and made a super bait. Yeah, when I was actually designing the bait, you know, we got a few other uh, very popular balsa makers right here in our area. Uh, guys that I've used their baits for a long time. And then also I pulled out kind of some of the standard square bill baits, you know, the 1.5 baits and stuff like that. And kind of had them all laid out on the table and just started kind of brainstorming, you know, what I wanted out of each one of those to put in the one bait that I wanted to start making. So there it is, like you crack in. So you had it on a free spool, so it would like just fly. Yeah, we put it on a spinning rod. Uh, actually, Bill, okay, there you go. Good idea. Um, yeah, he's a mouse over here. Uh, Bill Lowen, that's on here. But uh, yeah, Bill Lowen gave me that idea when I was telling him about how we was testing out some of the materials as I was talking about. Right. Because you know, you need to get out on the boat, put the bait on a rod, hit it with a bat out into the water, and then reel it in. So we finally had a nice day and was able to kind of shoot that video we've been waiting to do since uh, like January. Talent. His talent goes way beyond the lures. <laughs> so it's a custom custom resin. So probably not way different than like maybe some of the like uh, custom glide baits and maybe like some of the resins like somebody like Tater Hog would use. I mean, obviously you have your own blend and and you have your own buoyancy, but probably some of those high-end swim baits, you're probably doing some things. I'm not, you're not obviously going to give me the secrets of your, but it's something along those lines that some of these high-end swim bait makers and you're putting in a square bowl. Is that a, a lot of it? A lot of it's like a polyurethane type material. Sure. That it is. We just call it a composite. I mean, I don't know right. all the specific specifics on that material, but it's a hundred percent waterproof. The material is. So if you ever do, you know, crack that clear coat or whatever, the bait's not going to take on water. Uh, mm -hmm. Difference versus your wood baits, you always got to keep your clear, uh, clear fingernail polish handy and, you know, patch up those precious wooden baits anytime you put a little nick ding or whatever. But it still has a knocker in it. Like it's still a yeah, yeah. It's not a completely solid bait. It's not like there is still chambers in it. There is a chamber in there. There's two chambers in there. Yeah, we did that for the weight we transfer. Haven't shown, we haven't even shown a bait yet, but uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but they, I've got a couple of them. One's in a package, and one's on actually my rod. You want to recreate the float and the, the the buoyancy and the bounce back of balsa with this? I mean, like, how did that process go? And do you feel like you achieved that, or what was the what were you really aiming to do with the, the first design? The material was the same density as a balsa wood. So that's where okay. the buoyancy and everything comes from is the material's uh, density. Uh, just like balsa wood is a really light, not very dense wood, this material is kind of the same thing. Uh, it's a very light, but yet it, with it being the type of composite that it is, it's also considered a closed cell. So it doesn't absorb any water into those voids or whatever it is. 
uh, material. So, so basically, when you were doing your mad scientist resin development, you know, you if you had two two ounces of you know or two two cubic inches of balsa, your two cubic inches of resin, and that was kind of your target to get. Way very much uh, the same, yeah. Okay. It's right, right there. Right. In that whole part. It makes sense. I mean, it's super simple, but it makes a ton of sense now that you explain it that way. That like, yeah, that's how you. <laughs> You're getting the same reaction and the same buoyancy that you would yes. get out of balsa. Yeah, I looked up what the what the density is of balsa wood per cubic foot. You can find that information out online, the different densities and everything, and then kind of started my material search, looking around with everything I could find that gave me that same information. So you feel like the action, like so? I guess was so. There's is there anything to the chambers inside other than the sound, or do they do they act in casting or like? Yeah, they help in casting. Um, I made one a lot longer. That way it lets the, the tungsten weight we put inside of there. We use tungsten for the weighting of it. That way you can get that nice, very dense, you know, just like we all use tungsten sinkers for that that nice mm -hmm. weighting capacity. Well, I did the same thing inside of the bait was I, I used the tungsten weight in there. That way it keeps the size small. I can keep the chamber fairly small. With that chamber in there, it allows that weight to roll from the belly back to the tail of it whenever you're casting. So it helps transfer that weight, kind of helps from the helicoptering issues and stuff that you get with a lot of crankbaits when you don't have the weighting in there. And then also uh, the one chamber gives it that one knocker rattle too at the same time. Yeah, it's subtle. It's got a nice yeah. thud. Like it's, it's not loud, but it's got a nice... Uh, yeah, it's not the loud tick that you're used to with the, the plastic injection molded, you know, hard plastic crankbaits that you typically get, um, you know, mass-produced crankbaits out of the store. Uh, just with that material in there, it, it kind of gives it, like you said, it's more of a thud than it is a, a tick. It's unique too, not, you know, just what we're yeah, not, they're not used to hearing it either. So they're kind of curious and they're like, uh, let me check. That's 100% right. When you're, when you're fishing, you know, highly pressured waters, like you guys are, right? Like if everybody's throwing a KVD 1.5 or everybody's throwing whatever, just having that slightly different uh, frequency is a, it's a way to get bites. So there's a couple of questions. Uh, Sycamore Outdoors wants to know how long was the search process? And like, so when you just decided to start developing this bait to when you created your first bait, how long was that process? Probably eight months to a year. That's not bad, honestly. That's, I mean, it's a long time, but that's not, not, not crazy for lure development. Yeah. I don't think, especially for your first one, right? I mean, you've tinkered, but like, to really do your first own, that seems really, I mean, if you can get that in a year, that's that's cool. And then when you've come out with a couple other variations, did it go faster for the next round or? Um, yes and no, I've actually got one of the, I've got a couple of the flat sides right here even. The flat sides, I've even got a couple of my uh, first prototypes of it. On our flat sided bait, it is the same profile as the, as the round bait. So this shape right here around the outside of the body is the same. Right. This is my first revision of it there was completely flat. The problem was when I made this first revision, I broke a couple of them and I was kind of aggravated about that. I, I broke it just smacking it on the wall. So right, just like I made it clear in the chain. Clear in the leaves, you're like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, you got to test stuff out, see how strong it is. I know when you do that to other balsa baits, you break them too. But I'm like, you know, I'm, right. again, wanted to do something a little bit different. The finish design ends up being a little bit more tapered. It's a little bit thicker there in the belly, but yet a little bit skinnier in the back. Still the same profile, but just the actual shape of it there, shape of that body is a little. So was the trick there, you're just getting a little better connection point on the lip you're giving yourself a little more material where the lip a little comes more in. meat yep yeah. a little more meat in there and then with that one i went through a lot of different bill angle changes bill shape changes i probably tried at least 10 different bill shapes that i made and different lengths and then different angles of each one of those bills before i finally settled in on something i was happy with <laughs>